In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the thumb in piano playing because the thumb operates somewhat differently from the other fingers. Here's the fundamental problem of the thumb. If you look at the way we use the thumb and everything else we do, it opposes the four fingers of the hand. The thumb therefore operates as a grabber. It's what you use when people hand you something or when you need to hold on to something. But here's the thing, we don't use the thumb that way in the piano. In fact, in preparing this video, I was racking my brain. I, I can't think of anything else besides playing a keyboard instrument and typing where we move our thumb up alongside the fingers and where the thumb is sitting and not actually grabbing. Now that I've said that, you'll probably think of a ton of obvious things I'm not thinking of. Put it in the comments if I'm missing something. If we were gonna play the piano using the thumb, the way we use it to do other things we do with our hands, our thumb would need to be underneath and we'd actually have to have some notes underneath the keyboard for our thumb to play, which of course is totally ridiculous. The fact that we bring the thumb alongside the other fingers and yet, we are used to grabbing with the thumb in everything else we do with our hands is the source of many of the common technical problems that we pianists have with the thumb. Because of the basic way we use the thumb, we have an instinctive need to grab or hold on using the thumb in opposition to other fingers. But in piano playing, you need to learn how to relax your thumb and keep it relaxed while you play the other fingers. Another big issue with the thumb arises from an extremely common misunderstanding about the anatomy of the thumb. I used to have this same misunderstanding myself and I remember clearly my aha moment when it was first explained to me. You can see all of these joints here in the fingers are analogous to one another. And the analogous joint, the first joint in the thumb is here. So these joints are the same as that joint. Now these second joints are analogous to that joint actually. So even though this is wrinkly and looks similar to these joints, this is actually analogous to the first joint. This is the first joint. This here is the second joint. Now here, this joint where the fingers actually look attached to the hand, this joint here is analogous to this joint at the base of the hand. This is where we move the thumb from. Now I'm gonna show you, show you using my, um, the hand models here. And so you can see, this is that first, the first joint here, second joint, and then the third joint is actually, see, is right here at the base of the thumb. So this is where, this joint here is where we move the thumb. And all this meaty part here, that meaty part hides that joint. To play the piano, you want to move the thumb from that knuckle, from this knuckle here. When you don't have a full understanding that the thumb motion originates from this joint, you will try to move the thumb from this joint. And then what happens is the joint, this joint, which is what you're supposed to use, collapses and then you end up playing like this and it creates tension throughout the hand, underneath the wrist and up the forearm. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna play five finger pattern, or I'll play a little scale here. So five. Now here's me, here I'm playing the thumb from that joint, right? So you can see that looks that way. Now I call this way of playing the thumb, playing the thumb like a finger. I'm sure I didn't invent that way of talking about it, but that's just what I call it. You wanna avoid playing the thumb by dropping the whole hand like that. So a lot of people just drop into their thumb because they don't actually play it like a finger. And so it looks like that. Okay, and so the whole arm is collapsing every time you play the thumb. Now the reason you don't want to do that is because that's an extremely limited way to use the thumb. If you play anything fast, you're not going to be able to get around the instrument because you're dropping your whole arm every single time your thumb happens to come along. If you have this habit of dropping your whole arm every time you play the thumb, I am really excited for you because it means that you are poised to learn a whole new way to play your thumb that will make your technique so much easier. Easier. So here's an exercise for you that you can use to develop the ability to play with the thumb. So what you want to do here is put three fingers on the black keys like this and just quietly set them down. You can make sound or not, it doesn't really matter. And now what we're doing is just resting the arm on the keys. You can actually check if the arm is loose. 
check that all the muscles are relaxed in the in the fingers and then we're going to play the, the thumb this way and then you can move around and so you can see I'm lifting from that joint and I'm just practicing now if you're not used to playing from the third knuckle it might collapse while you play it might do that okay so if you're not used to that you, you can use the other hand and just pull it out and just pr practice uh, supporting this, this knuckle joint. You can actually use some, some string or rubber band, in this case I'm using uh, headphones, to uh, pull the joint, just wrap it around there. I'm pulling it very gently. But what you do is you can just pull it, so if I'm here, I can just guide it out while I play. Now this is especially helpful when you have a j double jointed thumb. You really want that thumb joint to be out and not collapsed because that leads to a healthy hand position. Now I'm gonna talk about something that's a really important issue in playing the thumb, and that is where on the key do you place your thumb? Sometimes I see people play the thumb like it's lounging around in bed. The whole thumb is just resting on the key but what and, and on its side. But that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility and mobility, and we want to play the thumb like a finger. So we're going to play it out on the nail like this at a slight angle. And that's the white key position. Okay, so in the white key, we're going to play here, there. But when you play black key, there's a natural, like, you need to, like, um, shift your arm and curve the finger a little bit to play. So it's a little bit like that. So you'll be able to see this in action in a minute because I'm going to demonstrate a few things and we'll look for where the thumb is showing up on the key. Now I'm going to talk to you about the four ways that the thumb can play a note. When I was practicing this morning, I was really focusing in and thinking about my thumbs. Now that's the kind of thing we, pre we college professors do. We geek out about all these little piano things. Seriously, our parties are geek city. Anyhow, I realized that this morning when I was practicing and thinking about my thumbs, that I had learned at some point that there are four ways the thumb can play a note. I'm gonna introduce all of them to you and then I'm gonna show you examples for each of them. Several people have asked me to do more playing examples in these technique videos and I'm happy to do so. I was avoiding playing too much because I figure you're here for your own playing but I can see that it might be helpful to hear more demonstrating. So I will do a little more demonstrating than in the past in this video. Here are the four ways the thumb can play a note. It can play a note by finger motion. It can play a note by wrist motion, by arm motion. And the fourth way is forearm rotation. And of course, combinations of these because it's rare that there's one pure motion that is only that. Usually we use combinations like maybe 80% rotation, 20% finger, stuff like that. The first thing I'm gonna demonstrate is from Cherney's School of Velocity number 14. I'm gonna demonstrate playing the thumb from this joint here. So this is what it looks like and sounds like slowly. Etc. So I'm moving the thumb from here so it goes. My second example is the example of playing the thumb from the wrist. The piece I'm going to play is Kabalevsky's Sonata Number no. 3, which is something that a student of mine is currently playing. And I want you to notice how the left hand is playing the chords. <laughs> So you can't play something like this just by dropping from the thumb and of course you're not going to play by using the whole arm because that's very unwieldy and so the way you drop the thumb in is by a kind of bouncy motion with the wrist. And to do this motion you want to also relax the thumb muscle right there. 
And I'd also like you to notice that I'm playing the, the thumb right at the nail, right there. My third example is playing the thumb using the arm. And for this, I'm going to play an octave passage. This is from Shostakovich's second piano concerto, which a student of mine is working on right now. Now notice that to do that, it wouldn't work to drop with the thumb on it. That would cause a lot of tension. I can't just bounce with the wrist because I'm moving so much. So this is really coming from my shoulders and back. There are three really good ways to practice octaves. The first way that I recommend is playing the octave and then relaxing in the air in between. So making sure that the muscle is, is loose and that you're not freezing the hand in an extended position. I call this motion puppy paws because you kind of come up in the air like a little puppy. So you can practice it that way. The second way to practice octaves is to play your thumbs alone. So the way that the reason that that's really helpful is because the thumb is the is a leader finger and so that helps your arms know exactly where to move. And then the third way to practice octaves which is helpful is to play double thumbs as you practice. So So that's helpful because that helps you loosen your thumb and not and, and kind of achieve that bouncy feeling that you're looking for. And I want to also point out before we leave this example that my thumbnails are here and then here it goes out just a little bit, a slight curve. So in slow motion. So it's a little micro adjustments that the thumb does. My fourth example is using the thumb in rotation. And so this is from the prelude of Pour Le Piano by WC. This is what it looks like in slow motion. <laughs> This is what it looks like faster. So in this example, I'm rotating with the right hand a little tiny bit and I'm keeping the arm level. Notice I'm not playing. A lot of times people are going to want to drop in, so you want to keep the arm level because otherwise it becomes too slow and it becomes very effortful. My final example for you today is from Haydn Sonata in F major. I'm going to use a combo touch. So there, it, it goes like this in the left hand. Now I'm not going to isolate and only play the thumb from here, but I'm also not going to only use rotation because this is what it looks like with I've just used rotation which is kind of too much. And this is what it looks like if I only play with the finger. And the... So I'm doing both. I'm using a rotation and both. So it looks like this. If you found this video helpful, please do all the things that you hear people tell you to do all the time. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with other people who might find it useful. This signals to the robots inside the YouTube algorithm that this content is valuable and it helps other people discover my channel. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to grab your free companion guide to my series on the five foundations of piano technique. The link is in the description. Also, my channel is still really, really young. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see here. I got the idea for this very video from the comments. So if there's something that you'd like to, to see me talk about or address, just let me know and who knows, I might end up making a video about it. Good luck with your thumb technique. I'll see you next time and happy practicing.